Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Paul Red Eye Chalomer, uh, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, player, host, and caster uh, in the esports scene. Paul, are you actually the most old school left? The most old school left. The most old school. Um, no, I don't know. I don't think so. I think DJ Wheat's been around a bit longer than me, and I think, I think probably Sir Scoots as well has been around longer than me. But we're we're part of like an old core, old style, you know. Your 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 old while. school cool. Yes. Now you have hosted, played, and casted a lot of uh, games over the years: Warcraft, FIFA, Counter Strike. Um, what and actually your first time hosting Dota 2 was two years ago at the ESL One Frankfurt 2014. What actually made you join Dota? Uh, it was a mixture of things, really. It was it, like honestly, it was a bit of weird luck more than anything else because. Uh, James Lampkin and I were planning ESL One Frankfurt in 2014. We wrote the show together. Uh, I was working with ESL at the time, and we were about three months out from planning it. It was the first time we'd done a big stadium event for Dota as well, so we were very nervous about it. We wanted to do it really well. And we were planning on how to do the stage and planning on how to do the desk. And at that time, three months out, we went through a number of different options for the desk. Uh, I can't tell you all of them, but at least half a dozen people we went through to try and do the desk. Or we were like, okay, what if we get so-and-so to do the desk and then someone else can do the stage? And originally, I think we planned on me doing the stage because I was doing lots of stage stuff at the time. And it's relatively easy to do stage for any game almost. Um, and that's what we were planning. And then just because we couldn't get any desk hosts at all, James was basically like, how do you feel about doing it? And I was kind of like, well... I don't really know too much about Dota, it's going to be a lot of prep, it's going to take a lot of work. Uh, but okay, you know, if we can't find anyone else, then sure, I'll do it. And, um, and we couldn't, so um, that's, that was my introduction to Dota. It was completely by mistake, it wasn't something we planned to do. Completely by mistake, but you did an awesome job, uh, because I was there two years ago as well. Um, now, how is actually hosting Dota different than hosting other esports, or is it different at all? Uh, it's not totally different. There's lots of similarities in the way that I would prep and the way that I would approach an event and how you interact with the panel. Like my job as a host is to make sure the panel talks to each other, that we have good banter, that we get on, that we bring out interesting facts and we talk about the game and we talk about the players and give them the, the kudos and the respect that they deserve. So that doesn't change from one game to another. Um, what changes, I guess, is the depth. And so Dota is very deep. Um, probably deeper than any other game, maybe save StarCraft on a 1v1 level, uh, in the sense that there's just so much to it. When you think that you've just about learned enough, there's a whole new layer to learn again. And then when you think you've learned enough of that, there's something else you have to learn. I mean, I, you know, without beating around the bush, when I came here in 2014 for my first ever Dota 2 event, I could barely distinguish the characters on the portraits, okay? So when the bands came up, I was kind of like, is that a brewmaster man? I don't know. I am not sure. Oh, that's gonna. I won't say anything. And I, I, you know, I learned as I went along. I thought I'd, I thought I'd learned enough to do the show, but actually doing the show made me realise there was like, I, I probably like ten percent of what I needed to know. I actually knew. So I'm a very competitive guy, and doing one event is never enough. I always want to do another one and do more and do better. So inevitably, you practice the game, you learn more about the game, you become more involved in the community, and as you do that. Dota is one of those games that sucks you in and, and won't let you go. So the more you the more you put in and the more you get involved in it, the more it gives back to you as well. So whilst it's a massively frustrating game to play, for me personally, because I'm massively competitive and I suck at Dota really badly, from a watching point of view... What do you mean you suck? Terrific. What is your MMR? It's not even an MMR. You can't even... I have like three MMR right now. And they're the three pieces of paper I got from Epicenter. Oh, okay. Um, but your panel helped you a lot through and you helped the panel a lot. And this is actually uh, a good question. What makes a good panel? What makes a panel great? Uh, a great panel is a mixture of personalities and the chemistry that goes with it. So it might not necessarily be three X players. It might not necessarily be three play-by-play -play casters. It might not necessarily be three personalities. But it might be that you, you give a panel, it should appeal to everyone and no one. And by that, what I mean is you have someone like me who can ask the newbie kind of questions that the casual person tuning in might be like, I don't really understand Dota, why is this loader guy any good and why does he pick this Terra Blade? And I can answer those kind of questions roundabout, in a roundabout simplistic way. Likewise, if you have someone like Purge on the panel, he can give you much more in-depth analysis about itemization and builds and so on. 
Yes. But that's where his strengths are. But I also want a human element. So having someone like Charlie on the panel, for instance, can give you a much more human element of the, of the panel. And that will appeal to certain parts of the audience as well. But then you need a, a top player. You need someone who understands the drafts, understands why players pick what they pick and what their mentality is going into a panel. So for me, having that nice group of different personalities and good chemistry between everyone and making sure the host does their job of controlling the flow of the conversation, making sure it's always going on and it's interesting, that's that's the perfect panel. Have we ever had one? I'm not sure. It's hard to say, right? But uh, so good chemistry and a lot of different personality types. Now to the last question, and you can be biased. <laughs> who is the better panel, you or the Dream League? Who, who is the... The Dream League. Yeah, hosted who is the by better what? The better panel, yeah. The, the better... The better panel, the better uh, hosting stage. Oh. You can be biased. I think it's different, honestly. It's to, it's so di like, I really enjoy watching Dream League, so... Um, I think what Shiva brings to that, and what the different panel brings to that, the comedy, and just some of the cool stuff that they do. I love that, but it's a different its a different environment, right? It's not in front of a huge audience, it's not in a stadium, it's in a controlled environment, it's in a studio. So it's a totally different way of doing it, but I enjoy that just as much as I would enjoy watching this if I wasn't hosting it and Chobra was hosting it, for instance. But they're different animals, they're different. It's like saying, I really like apples and oranges suck, right? Apples are great and so are oranges. Okay, just a different panel. Uh, thank you for the interview, Paul. You're just one last point, do you have any shout outs? Uh, just uh, shout out to all the Dota fans and uh, everyone that comes along to these big events and uh, makes it possible for me, for me to go and do a job that I love. So thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you and tune in next time.